Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stacking Chairs, a youth ministry podcast about all things youth ministry. So whether you serve in a local church or you serve at camp or you serve in a uh, parachurch organization, we want to help to put tools in your toolbox, resources in your hands, start a conversation about how you are reaching youth with the gospel of Jesus Christ and seeing them grow in their walk. Today... I am joined by two incredible people. I am joined by Jason and Deb. Uh, You guys work for Dare to Share. We've had Dare to Share on a couple different times, but Deb, we've never had you on the episode. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, So Deb, tell us, uh, what do you do with Dare to Share? Um, Oh my goodness. Um, Jason, thank you for the background music. Um, I have the honor and privilege of serving as the president. That's incredible. So... At the end of the day, do you get to set the standard, you know, fire guys like Jason? I mean, I mean, uh, <laughs> yes, I definitely have the authority wow. to do that. Wow. I would like to remind him of that oh. while we are here on this podcast. No. Um, yeah, I, I just it's a joy serving the staff, yeah. serving with the staff, um, obviously setting strategy, nice. doing a lot of that, so, making sure Greg doesn't say anything that he shouldn't. And when he does, which that. As a talker, we do all the time. Yes. Uh, what what brought your heartbeat or what was it about Dare to Share's heartbeat that just said, this is where I want to work. This is where I want to minister. Oh, my goodness. Well, um, first of all, never did not have a church background, did okay. not have a ministry background. Um, met Greg because he was the pastor at our church. Mm-hmm. Um, at the time, I had my um, own business, but I really loved the vision to to just equip teenagers. Mm. Um, and there was something about just learning about the power of the gospel, mm-hmm. which just still, mm-hmm. um, after several years, just is exciting to me and part of who I am. And then just the potential of teenagers. And so just absolutely love that. That's awesome. That's, what That's drew awesome. Me there. I love that. And, and you and Jason get to travel, uh, to the different places. You guys are here with us during our world leaders conference. And, and, uh, Jason, what has just grabbed your heart with the opportunity? And we've talked about this a little bit, but just how is word of life and dare to share partnering in this, in this incredible ministry. Yeah, I think it's just the shared heartbeat and passion. So we talk about the power of God, the potential of teenagers. Uh, we talk about every teen everywhere hearing the gospel from a friend. And so that's a shared heartbeat between Dare to Share and Word of Life. And so in a lot of ways, uh, what our organizations could do separately, what our ministries could do separately, obviously was having kingdom impact and advancing the gospel around the world. But what we've seen is we've come together. Mm. Uh, it, I, I think I've said it this way before. It was like our both teams instantly got bigger because of the partnership with each other, because things that we're able to do together. And so we, because of this partnership, we are that much closer to realizing the vision of every teen everywhere, hearing the gospel from a friend. And it's easier to believe and see that because no organization, no ministry would ever be able to accomplish that Mm. alone. Yeah. But working with you all, you all working with us, other organizations like, oh, we can actually see a way to get there. Well, and and it makes the mission accomplishable. Right. No, no, nobody wants to be a part of a mission that is constantly out of your reach and out of your grasp and you see little to no wins. You kind of, I don't know about you. I give up on that mission, but but when you get to see that accomplished and accomplished in other people's lives uh, is really exciting. And so we here at word of life, love the opportunity to connect with and partner with dare to share and seeing God do incredible things. Now, Deb, I was really excited about having you on this podcast episode because you help to develop leaders Correct. And as a person that is passionate about leadership and a healthy leadership team, I'd, I'd love to just kind of hear your heartbeat today. Uh, you know, we've had Jason talking about the mission of Dare to Share and reaching people with the gospel, which I'm sure will still flow in what we're talking about. But specifically, um, one of the questions I wrote down is, is you guys are really trying to foster leadership on your team. And so how, how are you doing that? How are you helping to develop personal leaders in their personal lives and in their ministry lives. What are some wins that you're seeing and what are some different things that you're doing to see that accomplished? 
Um, well, first of all, as a Christ follower, we're all leaders. Mm -hmm. um, and I think first and foremost that you're always working on your leadership skills, no matter if your sphere of influence includes folks that are, are, are officially subordinates to you or not. Mm. Um, we are, we take that very seriously. I, I take that very seriously as a, as a believer, as someone who is a disciple of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so we start internally with, with how we are doing that, how we are intentionally building and developing those leaders that are within our sphere of influence, but we also then are building and developing leaders outside of our sphere of influence. And the way that we talk to youth ministry, the way that we encourage youth leaders in the field. And so if we are not, um, we can't export what we don't import. Mm. So if we are not taking that seriously internally, then how can we expect anybody else to be following that same guide? So a lot of the things that we teach, stuff that's within the gospel advancing ministry mission and, and philosophy are things that we try to internalize as well. Yeah. Um, personally, because of my role, um, I start with those who are closest to me. So I have a small um, executive team that I really, really pour a lot into. Mm. Um, and Jason is a part of that. And we've got two other um, vice presidents. And that small um, circle is where I start. And mm. I pray for those folks and I love on them and I listen to them and I respect them. And I'm sincere yeah. and authentic about it. Like I really, truly care. Yeah. Um, and then, and then beyond that, they have leaders who then have leaders. And mm. so you have to develop them to be able to multiply out. And we would do the same thing as we talk to youth ministry leaders around the world. Now I'm sure, uh, that for every victory, hopefully there's more victories for every defeat, but I'm sure there's been some frustrations where people that you've been really excited about that maybe even have had all the talent and ability in the world and just kind of reached a point. I think of that passage where Paul said, talks about Demas. He talks about the people that have been in ministry with him and just kind of gave up. My question is not, let's talk about those people. My question is, how do you, as a leader leading leaders, not give up when those deep wounds and somebody says, Deb, I don't want to be on your team or I don't want to go in that direction. And you have to feel the hurt of that. How do you keep going? Um, well, first of all, I truly believe that you need to be authentic and you need to be vulnerable and transparent. Mm -hmm. um, and that is going to always put you at risk mm -hmm. of feeling hurt. Mm -hmm. and, and it just is what it is. What you don't do is you don't quit doing that. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't put up a wall and and try to protect yourself from it. You have to be able to work through it and push through it. And the very best way, for me anyway, mm -hmm. um, is just making sure that I my relationship with the Lord comes first, mm. and and then pray for them, um, and no matter what. And there's stories. I mean, I can tell I could tell a lot of stories. So I've been with Dare to Share now almost 27 years. Wow. Um, on my 20th anniversary, I had our HR person just go back into the system and tell me how many. Um, staff members we've had over the course of my tenure, like since I've been here, I was the very first employee at wow. Share. So I've got hold the number one hey, in the payroll system. Deb is literally number one. Yeah. <laughs> so there you have it. If you didn't but, know, I could have told that. I know. But, but um, I just wanted to know, and I, the, I mean, I was capturing some data. I really wanted to understand, you know, how many of those folks had actually resigned? Mm. How many of those folks had been terminated for some sort of reason? How many of those did we have to lay off back in 2008 and 2009, mm. which is crazy hard? Mm. Um, and as she, I found out at that time, this was about seven years ago, it was 271. And I remember that exact number. Mm. And I looked at that list of people and almost, um, I would say, there were maybe only about a dozen of those 271 where I did not know where they were and what they were doing. Wow. And, and good, bad, or ugly. That's incredible. Real McCoy. So it, it's just, it's just, you've got to see this. Leadership is just doing life with people mm. and you're, you're figuring stuff out and God is going to move in their life mm. in in different ways mm -hmm. and it's complicated mm -hmm. and you just, you just do life with them. I mean, that's what it's about. And sometimes it's going to match your goals 
and your objectives for the ministry, and sometimes it's not, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a, um, I think it's a Jewish proverb that I want to be covered in the death in the dust off of my rabbi sandals. I'm following him that close. Obviously knowing your heartbeat, knowing Jason's heartbeat, knowing the heartbeat of dare to share, you guys aren't trying to set yourselves up. You're, you're saying, Hey, like Paul, follow me as I follow Christ. Um, what are ways that you're involving people to feel like, Hey, I want to develop you, but I also want to get your heartbeat because part of developing a leader is fostering what they're passionate about and what they're excited about. What are ways, what are practical ways? If you could sit across the table from a, a youth pastor who says, Hey, I need to know how to practically like foster my people and what they're passionate about. And yet at the same time, get them to do what I want them to do. Um, what are, what are some practical things that you try to do to see that happen? Um, well, first of all, it does, I mean, I've been doing this a really long time now, so it, it, it takes a lot of work and, um, a lot of intentionality, mm. but the, I would start first with just really listening and really wanting to learn, mm. um, where, where God has called them, what makes them tick, mm. um, even when you're dealing with conflict, even when you're going through stuff, when you're on mission or you're in a meeting or you're working on a project, there is, there's life that is happening, you mm. know, for them. So their, their temperature, their emotional response to whatever you're saying um, is influenced by what else is happening in their life. I mean, they could have had a sick kid at home. They could have had a fight with their spouse. They yeah. could have, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that can be going on that is external that you have to work through. And so listening is huge. Mm -hmm. And then I would just say, you've got to be able to, to learn. Yeah. And so that, those just two things practically that I would add. Well, and, and, and you bring up a great point and it, I, I love that this is clearly part of your heartbeat because you said this phrase two or three different times for yourself and for them you, it has to begin with you continually learning. Correct. So how do you as a leader, cause, cause let, let's be transparent. Sometimes it's a whole lot easier to just make it look like we have all the answers and we've got it all together. Right. But let's peek behind the wizard's curtain. None of us have it together. I would love to hear from the two of you. What are practical things that you're during, doing to continue to learn as you're leading Jason? Let, let's start with you. Yeah, I think, uh, well, in a very, very practical sense, one of the things, and, and I'm very grateful for the time that I get from Debbie out of her calendar and her investment in my life. Uh, she's been investing me in, as a leader all the way going back to 2006 when I first uh, worked at Dare to Share. I, I would like to say that I am not anywhere associated with any frustration stories that Deb has in developing leaders because I never left Dare to Share for seven years between 2011 and never. 2018. Never, never. But... Um, one of the things that she has continued to do is, is I'm just giving her time. And so what she talked about of doing life together, like there is, there are times that we're in leadership development meetings that there's not necessarily a set agenda or structure to that time. It's just doing life together. And so mm -hmm. there's a very organic, natural, which allows space for rapport to be developed, uh, trust to be built. Uh, but one of the things that we do on a very practical level is oftentimes reading books together and then processing and dialoguing around those books. And so just to glean principles. Um, but another way that we've done that and it actually happened on the flight to Florida just a couple of days ago was she'll present, uh, Hey, I've got this email that poses this question. Hmm. How would you respond? Hmm. Why would you respond that way? And then nine out of 10 times, then the next 30 minutes is let me tell you all the ways that you answered that wrong. <laughs> and let me teach you then how the right way to respond. <laughs> but it's, it's in those real moments. Of Love let, it. let me invite you into the thought process. Yeah figure out how you would process and then let me, you know, kind of teach and learn and, and debrief. And what she's really good about, I do want to encourage her in this, uh, Debbie does a remarkable job of asking sometimes difficult questions, but asking probing questions so that mm. you kind of discover it yourself as opposed to just saying you did A, B, and C wrong, and this is how you should do it next time. Mm. It's the, why'd you do it that way? Did that make the most sense? If this is our end game, does that get us there? And then in the midst of that conversation, you go, oh, yeah, that probably wasn't the best way to respond. I'd do it this way, given the opportunity to do it all over again. And it becomes a really cool. So teaching. what you're saying is learning is the more important part of teaching. And she models it all Huge. the time. Because again, I can stand up. And how many times do we tell people this all the time? Discipleship doesn't happen from the pulpit. Now, an aspect of it, sure. the teaching side, mm -hmm. you could run a meeting, 
but helping that person to learn just transparent moment. I, I just, I literally was just having a conversation with some guys about, Hey, it, that same grace that I expect you to extend to me as a leader that's walking through this situation sure. for the first time, I could extend it to you when you're walking through it on the first time. And so I love that. All right, Deb, what, what are, what are, what's a practical thing different from what Jason said that you're oh, helping yourself to, so glad I got to, the first. to learn <laughs> as you're leading? Well, he was telling that story. I just have to mention that um, we were on the airplane working through this. Part- it's really nice when you have something practical that you can just put out there and ask questions. But um, um, all of the executive team, when they know when I'm getting, I mean, they, they pick up on my cues mm-hmm. and they know when that's happening. And there's a little bit of fear that comes on there because the, you know, there's a right answer. Yeah. So that's you what know. they tell and them. You just got like, it wrong oh, five times. Like, they look at me like, okay, I know she's fishing for something, but what is it? And, yeah. um, and it's just, it's, it's like when you're walking up to the field and you're mm-hmm. getting ready to, you know, mm-hmm. go on to play a game and, and they sort of like you know, like gear up and yeah. get ready. And, uh-huh. and I just love that. I love, I love that opportunity that I get to learn mm. from them because honestly, the end result is not, um, I mean, it's important obviously because you're trying to re- resolve a problem usually or deal with an issue or complete a project, but, but the process of getting there, the thought process of getting there, the way that they're working through that teaches me so much about who they are and how mm. they, how they think. Mm. And then I can respond to that and I can help, I can help guide that. So that's one way that I learn. I, I also consume a lot of content. Mm. Um, so that's one of the things I tell all our young leaders that, you know, if you are are not a learner. And if you don't start creating margin in, in your life to be learning in some way or another, you are not going to be a leader. I mean, you just cannot, you cannot not be a reader. You can't, you can't be one of those people who just, who just sits. Mm-hmm. You have to constantly be stretching. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's, that would be a, my piece yeah. of advice. I love, I love that. And, and uh, again, just that extends an amount of humility to your staff of, hey, I may think I have the answer and I think I know what I would want you to do, but you, the willingness to put that question out to them, to hear from them, because there's a chance they're going to share a perspective and you go, oh, I didn't, I never thought oh, about that. Oh, let me just say how many oh. times they are, they are, they have a better way of doing something than I would have. Wow. So when I get, when I get really directive, mm-hmm is usually when I am really stressed, Mm -hmm. I don't have time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I recognize it in myself now after 40 years of leadership Mm -hmm. that I can see it coming. Mm. It's like a freight train. And, and, and it's so, I'm so embarrassed because it is, it is the worst part of me as a leader I can tell, Mm. but Almost always they have a better solution because you've walked through it. And you, when you're able, there are times I have one situation in my mind's eye right now did not involve Jason. So I'll just give him that caveat. But I had a leader come into my office. He was extremely frustrated with this problem, could not get to the bottom of it. He sat down at my conference table. I literally asked him like five questions. Mm -hmm. He answered those questions, had the solution, felt like I helped him. I did not say a word. Yeah. I didn't say a word. Yeah. It was all his. Yeah. It was all his idea. She's yeah. very Yoda. Like It was so awesome. <laughs> he was like, oh my gosh, you helped me so much. I'm like, yeah. well, actually. So much <laughs> of leadership is just osmosis, you know, just being around. <laughs> the aura. I'm like, I literally did nothing. Yeah. But you yeah. bet. Yeah. Well, and, um, and, and I think, again, it's so important to then celebrate those people Having wins. Uh, one thing that I've always appreciated, I, I, I've been working for Word of Life uh, in s- several different aspects. I worked on the uh, youth ministry side, working with children's workers, youth workers, helping to develop leaders. I, I strongly encourage you guys out there, uh, again, just to talk about what we do with Word of Life Youth Ministries. How can we partner with you and help you to accomplish what you value, adding tools to your toolbox, resources in your hands, uh, and then now working with camps. But with both of those aspects, I've realized the importance of recognizing the wins of my people and not a lot of times they go, oh, Kyle, you. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It wasn't me. It was you. How do you guys in Dare to Share recognize the wins? And and I'm going to ask you in two different categories because you guys work with people on your staff and then you work with a ton of people 
that partner with your, your team, but actually are not, they technically don't report to you. Right. So how do you celebrate the wins of people on your team and off your team to give credit where credit is due? Yeah, I can jump in with that. There's a, so the, the bottom line is, is really simple. It, it's telling their story. Mm. And so to celebrate them, you know, what, what we celebrate is what we replicate. And so when Ooh. you talk about the stories of somebody's win and other people hear it, they go, oh, that's, if that's what's getting celebrated, there's something in that that I, I can learn from. And so one of the ways we do that internally, dare to share, we have five internal core values that are very near and dear to our heart. It's, it's very much who we are in our DNA. And so Debbie has created a culture where when you see one of those values in one of your coworkers, send it to Debbie so that you can celebrate that person. And then she will at an all staff chapel, share that story. And she'll share both who was celebrating that person and what that person did to live out those values. And so it, it celebrates the culture mm. of celebrating and, and, and telling stories. And then that person who maybe didn't even know somebody was watching them, mm. But that value of work it out, they 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 did in that moment. They worked it out. It was it was a tough project, or they they had to get through some conflict to get to the win. They didn't even know that somebody was watching, right? They, oftentimes, the 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 first time the person hears that that story is being shared is when it's being shared, right? And so it's a cool way to do that. And then it's really similar with our youth leaders is is we share their stories, mm. we celebrate their victories, um, and, and so it's just a lot of fun. Like it's really. It's just getting to brag on what God is doing in the lives of people that you're investing in. Hmm. So uh, sitting at a leadership level position, let's just be transparent. It's really easy to reach a spot where everybody else is doing and you're just telling them to go do. It, it would be probably pretty easy for all of us to talk and to challenge people about sharing the gospel and mm -hmm. sharing, you know, sharing their, your testimony and participating in that life in six words and using the app and different things that, that youth ministries and dare to share utilizes, but to have other people do it and not us do it. Oh, sure. What are ways that you guys practically have said, how, this is, this is what I do in my life, not to just talk about the mission, but to keep my heart involved in the mission. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a great question because, um, you know, we have Greg Steer. Right? Oh, listen. So, you know, the man has like 200 and something people in his cause circle. Mm -hmm. And then on staff, we've got the accounting clerk who, you know, probably is, you know, understands how to articulate her faith, but maybe, maybe doesn't feel as confident, mm -hmm. you know, might, might share in, in a different way. Um, I am a great example of that because I am, I do not consider myself, I'm an incredibly relational person, but I'm mm. not like this super evangelist, even close. And so I have to be able to express um, the gospel to be able to apply that value in a way that, that matches my style, that matches who I am, but I also have to keep it out in front of me. Mm. And I think Greg has done a fantastic job in helping all of us feel like the Great Commission is still something that we're all called to do in our own way all the time and that we need to be praying and caring and sharing. Mm. And, and some folks are going to do that a little bit differently. I mean, I'm going to be, I've been praying for my half sister for years now, and mm. I will be leaning into that and trying to communicate with her for a while. You know, she, it's a long, long story, but it's just one of those barriers to getting the gospel through to her. But the power is actually in the message itself. Mm. So we apply that internally as we, um, as we do our chapels every week, mm -hmm. we, we walk through, we use the tools that we have created for others. Um, and we do it in a way where it really allows people to be themselves, but also reminds them that this is what the mission is about. And there's, a, there, they need to be, their heart needs to be aligned with that, obviously. All right. Let so, me, so, can, uh, yeah, just to tag on that, because we've talked about take five for the cause. I, I was literally right going to ask, are yeah. you, so do we, you guys we, really we do. in your meetings take yeah, five for the exactly cause? Really so, so I we, love it. We tell you leaders take five for the cause, let students share their stories of how they're praying for, caring for, sharing the gospel with friends, the wins, the lose, like, good, bad, ugly. Every week in our chapel, we start with a time of worship and prayer. And then because it's been on Zoom for a while, we get in with prayer partners. And the purpose of that 15 minutes of prayer time, in addition to personal requests, is to, okay, who's in your cause circle? Who are you praying for? 
how, how far is that gospel conversation gone? Give an update there and then pray for each other in those continued efforts. And so we're doing that as a staff mm. weekly, the same way we would ask and expect and challenge a youth leader mm. to do that in their youth group. And so 100%. And I'll, I just want to affirm this because Debbie does this extraordinarily well. Uh, there's a leadership principle. You can't lead people where you haven't been. Ooh, come on. Right? And so the thing I, one of the many things I love about Deb and her leadership is that she, as she leads, it's because she's been there and she's done that in some respects. And there's times that she may just be a step ahead of us, right? She's just one step in or behind. She's, <laughs> but she's she's going there with us, right? Mm. And so that's it, that's part of our culture. And so I say that to say that as we challenge youth leaders to do these things, it's not in our DNA as mm. a as a ministry and a culture to say, hey, you should do this, and we're going to sit back and watch. Hey, you should do this because we're doing this alongside of you, right. and we're doing it with you and learning along the way. I love that. Okay, last question before we get into small group. Small I've been group. hearing about these four L's that you then <laughs> transitioned and made into the four P's. What are the four L's, Deb? Share with us. Can, can you share with them? Would you be willing to share with us the four L's? Okay. It's nothing. Can we get a whiteboard out real quick? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. If you're watching live, you can read them on the bottom four thirds, but- uh, There you go. There right. you go. So um, I've mentioned them already a little bit, a couple of them anyway. Listen um, is something that I really promote with all our leadership and all of our leadership development. You have to listen. I actually struggle with this. I like to talk, um, <laughs> but but I need to listen. I need to I need to understand um, and learn. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit about that already. You should always be learning, mm -hmm. um, and then actually love. So a lot of times love doesn't get talked about in leadership. People get freaked out about that. But let me just tell you something. Love goes a long way. Mm. And you really need to sincerely love the people that you're co-laboring with, especially in ministry. Mm. And I mean sincerely, authentically love them. Yeah. And that's a big deal. It's underrated and needs to be prioritized and elevated. Um, and first of all, if you, don't, if you don't hire somebody you think you can love, you probably shouldn't hire them. Like, like you need to have you need to have that type of chemistry that that you know, not in a weird way, but in a great way that you can work alongside somebody. You're going to be able to develop trust. Mm. Um, and then the last L of those four is lead. And the heart of leadership is that you are going to have to make decisions. You're mm. going to have to be out front. You're going to have to make decisions sometimes that are unpopular. You're not going to have consensus, mm. but you have to lead from out front and you have to take that. You have to be able to be willing to make that decision in a time of crisis, especially, and then stick with it. And if stuff changes and you're wrong, then you have to go back and mm. you have to tell your team, okay, listen, I've got new data. I was wrong. This is what it looks like. Mm. Um, I did a podcast with Greg. It, it, it's one and only, I think, other podcast I've ever done. <laughs> um, but he really wanted to add laughter and so that's our fifth. I L. love it. It's like a bonus. Um, I love laughter. Didn't see that coming because I told you there were four. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so I I like that too because I love. I actually really love that we are able to laugh. Um, obviously, that's one of the reasons that Greg and I have been able to serve side by side all these years is because he can make me laugh. I love laughing. I love having joy. I think believer as believers, we need more joy. So, j just to review these, yes. you need to listen to your team. Yes. You need to learn your team. You need to continue to learn as a leader. You need learn to together. learn together. Yeah. You need to love your team and love what you do <laughs> on, on the team. You then actually need to step out and lead them. And whether that's a come with me or it's a, Hey guys, I'm here. Let, let's go. And then take some time to laugh with your team. I know I already said the last question, what happens, <laughs> what happens and how, or how often do you take time to evaluate how those five things are going or to reevaluate how those five things are going? Well, I'm pretty intentional about it. Okay. So, and there's quite a process okay. um, all the time. Okay. It is all the time. I have regular weeklies. I have monthlies. We have quarterlies. I meet with um, not just my close inner circle, mm. but I also do random ad hoc meetings with other staff where I will take them out to coffee or take them out to lunch. Um, I am constantly mm. 
evaluating that. Mm -hmm. um, corporately, um, the culture, as it relates to the culture and where we're at and the temperature of the whole team, especially cr through COVID, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, um, you have to just double down on that through that really hard time. And then, and then individually as well. So it sounds like to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, you are actually giving an open, safe space for your staff to say, hey, Deb, you say these five things are important. Are important. I don't feel like you're doing this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That, that's that got to be a kind of scary place, but a really healthy place for them to feel. So I guess my question is, do they actually share with you that? Oh, my gosh, yes. Really? All the time. Yeah, yeah. I And, I, and it's hard. Has Jason ever? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like they call me on it. <laughs> they call me on it. it. You know, of course it's hard. But I mean, there is so much leadership toxicity out there right now. Hmm. We've seen we've seen folks that quit listening. We've seen folks right. that put themselves in a white tower and forget. And and oh my gosh, what is the Lord saying? Because mm -hmm. He's looking on these ministries, especially. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, and if you're in a if you're in the secular workplace. A lot of that stuff isn't tolerated because it's about the almighty dollar, right? Oh, yeah. And, and you are looking at that and you've got leaders, good or bad or just whatever, but they are constantly evaluating those leadership principles. In ministry, we should be that much more diligent and, and intentional because, because it matters to the kingdom of God. Yeah. And so I'm not going to be doing this forever. I mean, I'll be 60 this year. I know that, that there will be a season when I'm ready to move on. I need to be able to, to take that mission seriously. It's bigger mm. than ourselves. Mm. So they're great about telling me, wow. calling me on it. They're, and they're also very respectful. Good. Yeah. I, I've it's, never had. Nobody's taken anybody well, to Because task. again, remember, she already She's said it's a little bit of fear yeah. when you <laughs> step up. Exactly when she, right. she goes, no, let's revisit that. Uh, <laughs> you answered that wrong. So. Yeah. I, I, you know, I told my son. Um, one time I said, you know, it is never bad to question authority. Mm -hmm. However, how you do it matters. Yeah. Oh, amen. Big time. Oh, amen. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I really appreciate it. We are now going to transition into small group. Small group is a time that we like to just kind of, again, maybe share some wins, share some fun stuff. <laughs> Jason Bring back likes the funky snap. music. I, just, I love um, the music. But, uh, elevator jazz. You time. know, typically we either, <laughs> we either laugh or we talk about stuff that we love. Deb, Jason, I would love to hear what's a leadership win that you guys, whether it's a personal leadership win or a leadership win that you've seen happen in a church or in a staff member, give us some hope. Uh, what's something that has happened in the last year, in the last couple months that you go, you know what, when everything else is falling apart, sometimes I just hold on to this story because it gives me hope to keep going. Mm. Give us a leadership win. Yeah, I think for me, I think of the youth leaders that we work with that have embraced gospel advancing and even in the midst of a COVID and pandemic and are we on the other side of it or not, have stayed faithful to the gospel, the centrality of the gospel in their ministry, advancing the gospel within their ministry and are seeing students grow, right? Grow spiritually, growing in their journey, their faith relationship with Jesus Christ, growing in their boldness to reach their campuses. For us to hear stories of youth leaders that have stayed faithful and are seeing their youth groups grow in the midst of this, it's not just because they kept their doors open, it's they're seeing new kids come to Christ because of what their kids are doing. That for the way, and I could, I could name literally hundreds of youth leaders that live that out in some way, shape or form, but that, that's what keeps us going is get that youth leader on the phone with somebody on our team who, hey, we showed up last week, gave the gospel, give the gospel every week, and this Wednesday night, three kids put their faith and trust in Christ, and you go, that's that's it. That's wow. why we do what we do. I love it. I, love I it. would amen that. I, it, those stories that come in from leaders in the field, and especially when they're able to see transform lives, that's a big deal. Mm. I, um, As we were walking over here to meet you, not but less than an hour ago, yeah. um, we had a leadership win. I was talking to Jason about someone that is brand new on his staff, and mm. This, this young man, Gustavo Gonzalez, has taken the principles and the, some of the things that we've had in the ministry now, and they, he's applied it. And it's a win for me mm. because I've seen Jason now pour into Gustavo and do a lot of the things that I was doing mm -hmm. with Jason to develop him, but yet he's developing now Gustavo and Gustavo is taking the reins. And mm. so it's almost like a grandparenting model, wow. you know, where you're able to see not just your the effect of your own leadership, but the effect of the leadership that you've poured into someone else on someone else. I love that. 
I love that. And, and, and again, even hearing your wins are encouraging for me. Mm. Uh, and, and I love that. I think that's so vitally important for us to share the good things that God is doing uh, and be willing to do other things. In fact, my good friend, Josh, who is normally one of our co-hosts, normally sitting in this spot, With all the uh, and is, the slides. Is, uh, is taking care of the board today. So that's why Josh is not here with us. It's not just because we only have three microphones and we didn't have a spot for him. Uh, Josh willingly said, hey, I'll step over there and do that other guys. What, 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 Josh? I'm so sorry. We can't hear you. <laughs> but, uh, because he doesn't have a microphone. <laughs> hey, um, There's that. <laughs> guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for, for listening, for watching. Uh, please subscribe again. This is stacking chairs, uh, just creating a ministry, youth ministry conversation working, uh, today or conversing today with Deb and with Jason, with dare to share. Uh, listen, it's not going to go perfect because you're not working with perfect people. And just as a reminder, you're not a perfect person either. But all of us can celebrate the wins around us and all of us as leaders can challenge other people around us to see the good things that God is doing in and through us. And so go change your life today. Celebrate with them. Amen. Awesome. Is that good, Josh?